Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew Bacon. So I'm in my garage and behind this long wall is a room inside our house that we really didn't know what to do with. It was super long. And so I thought, dude, let's put a wall up, a door from the garage, and I'll make my own home office. And so who doesn't need a home office these days, right? And so after a little bit of work and some details, I've got my very own home office right here off our garage. And I wanna show you exactly how I did it on this episode of Field Treasure Designs. So a quick recap, that's the wall with the future door that I was just standing by. You walk into the entrance to our back door there. To the right is the room we're gonna divide in half. What makes this perfect is there's already a window, an AC duct and power, and so I'm gonna put the wall right there. Let's get started. So the first step was to install a door. So I wanted to find the right spot, so I started by cutting out a small square of drywall just so that I could find a stud to base my measurements off. I wanted that stud to be on the left as the anchor for the door that's going to swing inward. Then I grabbed my level to make sure my lines were nice and square. I scored the lines with my utility knife, but then the multi-tool makes short work of drywall cuts. You just have to be careful to go straight. Sometimes I used my utility knife just to help me score the line a little easier, and then I cut it into sections to make it easier to remove. And so finally I got the one panel off, and you can now see that there is a power cord right there, so you wanna be careful when you're cutting drywall to not go too deep. And so I'm gonna have to reroute that power later on. And so yeah, taking off the first panel, and we're doing this thing. After I got the next panel off, I took some time to take out the remaining drywall nails that were still there. I tried to go a little bit at a time just because this can become a very long process. I had my helper there helping me get rid of those nails. And now another panel. Now it's starting to really come out and it feels good. Oh, yeah. And again, taking out more drywall nails. Next, I needed to remove the insulation, so I carefully took it out and had my awesome wife help me by holding the trash bag. I did the best I could to keep that paper backing on so that the dust wouldn't go everywhere, and it went pretty good. At the top, I used scissors to cut off the top because there's gonna be a little extra up there that I wanna keep the insulation in. So real quick, I need to deal with the electrical cord in the wall. So I want to keep this run live. And so after I turned off the main power, I cut the cord and I'm going to pull it back to the left there and then install a receptacle on the left side. Then I'm going to run it around the door frame and into the right side, which I'll show you in a second. Next, I needed to fine tune the opening and make it just wide enough and tall enough for the door opening and the door to fit in. And so I'm cutting, I'm leveling out, and I'm making sure that I have just enough removed so I can take out this frame. And so also to note that little square on the right there with the wire coming out, that's where my other receptacle is going to be. And so I'm going to run Romex cable around the door frame and then connect it right there on the right to have that continual electrical run. Next, I needed to take out the internal framing. So first, I'm cutting out the diagonal wall brace that the framers had used when they originally built the wall. And so I'm using my reciprocating saw to cut that out on both ends, and then I'm going to pry it out. Now I'm cutting out the spacers in between the stud sets. It doesn't matter if my reciprocating blade goes through the drywall on the other side because I'm cutting out that as well. Now I'm taking out the main studs themselves. I cut the bottom, then the top. I use my hammer to knock it away from the drywall and then pull them off. Hopefully they'll all be this easy. Okay, now that the studs are out of the way, I need to take out the drywall on the other side. To make it easy, I'm punching a hole in each corner so that I know exactly where to cut from the other side to avoid making a giant mess. So now I'm inside the room and I cut away the drywall and to my kids' audience, I pulled it away in sections. And there we go. The first hole to the office. Then I just did the same thing. I pulled it out and we're good to go. Then I just did some vacuuming just to clean up the space because that drywall dust gets everywhere if you don't take care of it quickly. 
Unfortunately, that third stud wasn't measured out wide enough to fit the door frame, so I had to cut that one out. Later, I'm going to add another stud on the right, which is also known as the jack. I'll also have to add a header, but in the meantime, I'm taking out that bottom plate you see there to make room for the door. Okay, this part needs some good explanation. My goal is to minimize the remodel, and so I'm actually inserting the stud on the top and bottom of the blocking that's inserted there in the wall. This is not a load-bearing section of the wall, and therefore a king and a jack and a header really isn't required from a structural standpoint, but it's important to know that if you are doing a load-bearing section of a wall with a door, you definitely want to look up how to do that correctly. And quite frankly, I'm doing this the easiest and fastest way that I can. So that stud or jack that I'm putting in allows that drywall to anchor to it and then it's also going to allow the outside door frame to have something to attach to as well. Now I'm just tossing back some insulation up into that wall cavity. And now the fun part, installing the door. And so we're going to put this in the front there. I have to go underneath the garage door track there. We slide it up in and then once it's secure I'll tack on the trim and the frame on the back side or the inside. I need to point out that this is a fire rated garage sort of exterior door and so it's very important to do that, spend the extra money for that extra protection between your garage and the interior of your home. This door also has that threshold already installed as one complete kit so it's perfectly ready to go as long as you get it in nice and level and plumb and man this went in great. After I made sure it was level, I started to tack in all that trim with my nail gun inside and outside. And then I drilled in two and a half inch screws on the door side to really anchor that in. Okay, now I need to explain the power situation. So here's how I did the wiring. So if you remember, I cut it right here. This one line was going all the way down and there was a receptacle inside the office here, right? So I cut it back, I brought the wire back, I added a receptacle here and at every receptacle, every outlet, you can have one wire coming in and then another wire connecting to the next receptacle. That's called the lines in the circuit. And so I took an extra Romex cable, I went all the way around and then basically I had the leftover cable from the old receptacle here and the new one and I connected them both in a new receptacle here. So I was able to complete the circuit back to the original one inside which allowed me to keep receptacles out in the garage as well as keep the one inside. So that's how I did it. So I'm going to assemble my wall and then raise it up into place. And so here I'm measuring out my top plate for all of my studs 16 inches on center. Once I got that down I brought in the bottom plate and now I can make sure everything is lining up accordingly. I stack them on top of each other and then grab my tape measure so that I can measure the exact height of each stud that I need. It's also worth noting that I'm measuring each section because this house was built about 50 years ago and so each stud needs its own height to be measured. Now I just cut each one to length. So after I got them all cut, I brought them in and because I had made lines on both the top plate and the bottom plate, I was able to line them up and get them nice and square and know exactly where I wanted each stud to be. And instead of using nails, I decided to just use some extra deck screws that I had laying around. And so you can see me drilling them in here through the top plate just enough so that they won't scratch the top of the ceiling. And now we're all good to go. Now it's time to lift this bad boy into place. So I didn't attach it to the bottom plate just yet. One, because I didn't want screws from underneath going into the studs. I'm gonna attach those a different way. But I wanted to make sure all the measurements were right and I had it just tight enough where I could adjust it, but it wasn't so loose that it would fall back down. And so yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna need a few shims on the bottom side of some of these, but I didn't mind, I didn't care. I knew that that was gonna happen because again, I'm doing a remodel. So once I got all the shims in place and made sure all the studs were solid, I drilled pilot holes and then I'm screwing in more deck screws rather than nails just because I had extra laying around. And so I'm doing them at angled toenails, getting them nice and secure. And again, I didn't mind needing to use shims. I was glad that I cut a little shorter rather than longer so that I wouldn't have to disassemble the wall and then cut the studs to length. So no problem at all. 
Now it's time to install some shiplap. So my awesome wife helped me hold the boards up. I bought 12 foot long boards so that I could cut just a little bit off of each one and it would be super easy just to go all the way across with one board. And so you don't have to have your measurement perfect. You can have a gap on the left and the right because as you'll see later, I'm gonna come in and do a trim on both the left and the right side. And so once you get the first board level and use your nail gun and pop those nails in, you then have a level board and can then work your way all the way down. Before we can continue though, I have to stop and tell you something super important. After I got done with both sides of the shiplap, I realized that my wall was not soundproof. So I rushed out to the big box store, bought a ton of drywall, took off all of the shiplap you see there. Then I installed all the drywall. To have some fun, I let my kids draw all over it. Then I put all the shiplap boards back up on both sides. So I wanted to let you know that so that you don't make the same mistake. I highly recommend putting drywall up before your shiplap, especially if you want soundproofing. So now back to installing the shiplap boards. And just like you see, we went one at a time. And when that first level board is good, you can just go all the way down. Something to note is that I am going to caulk that shadow you see at the very top at the end. And then you won't even notice it when we're all done. Now I'm on the office side installing the insulation. And like I said earlier, I thought the insulation was going to do enough for soundproofing and it turned out it didn't. So that's why I had to install the drywall, which I highly recommend. So this insulation comes in already pre-cut sheets that fit within those 16 inch on center studs and they went in nice and easy. They're nice and snug, so I don't have to worry about stapling them. And then the very last one was the only one that I had to cut and I just used scissors to cut it all the way uh, down the line and then I can stuff it into that left cavity you see there. Later, I'll use scissors to cut the bottoms off as well. Now we install the shiplap on this side. And again, just reminding you, I ended up taking off all of these boards in order to then put the drywall on. But yeah, it's the exact same process that we did on the other side, just now on the office side. So leveling it, holding them up, and going one at a time. And boom. So after we got the drywall up and then put the shiplap back up, we had tons of little odds and ends to do. I trimmed out the inside of the office door since it doesn't come with the trim and just matched the other trim style that was in the room. I also cut one by fours in half to make the trim on the left and the right. A little bit of caulk and it looks great. Here's a shot of the floor section and how I did the side trim and the floor trim. And eventually I'll cut out the carpet and either do new carpet or maybe a LVT or wood flooring. As you can see, shiplap can look a little dingy when you're first installing it, but my awesome wife painted a couple coats and man, it cleans up so nice. Check out how clean it is when you're all done. And it is true that caulk and paint make a carpenter what he ain't. To upgrade the walkway a little bit, I bought carpet tiles at the big box store that stick directly to the underlying surface. And I was a little bit nervous about it, but it worked out great and I love it. So there you go, we had this long, awkward room that we were able to maximize the space, turn one side of it into a future guest room with bunk beds, and now I've got this awesome office that I can get to from my garage. I've got privacy at home, and I love this thing. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.